Uh, would you would you die for your country? I really don't think so. Eh. Let's say like you still die or you go under occupation, no? Occupation, any time. <laughs> okay. Because okay. I don't give a f- who is in charge. Is it a problem if Singaporeans don't care about the Russian-Ukraine war? This is your daily catch up. Yes, alert. Okay, so I know we mentioned about the budget a couple episodes ago, but there's still really quite a lot of important information that we didn't mention, and I'm that sure you, you guys, is. you guys you confirmed watch didn't read it. So, uh, we thought we'd quickly like package it in a bite-sized like form for you guys. Okay, so to uplift low-wage workers in Singapore, right? There's going to be a nine mil- a billion dollar budget to be spent over five years uh, to facilitate which increase from 2022 to 2026. Those are the five years. And also to enhance mm. the Workfare Income Scheme benefiting more than 500,000 workers. Work, uh, workfare Income Supplement. It's supplement, like Workfare Income Supplement. There's also going to be uh, additional support that will be pro- provided to uh, mid-career workers who are vulnerable due to like disruptions in the workplace, mm. uh, you know, automations and things like that. So like with schemes like uh, the Skills Future Career Transition Program, the Jobs Growth Incentive and SG United Mid-Career Pathways Program. Uh, and also lastly, um, to help enhance retirement adequacy in Singapore, especially for like your parents, right? Mm. Uh, especially for seniors preparing for retirement, there's going to be an increase in CPF contribution rates for workers between the ages of 55 to Ooh. 70. And also to ensure that seniors uh, receive a higher monthly CPF payout, basic retirement sum is going to be raised by 3.5% per year for those turning 55 from 2023 to 2027. Uh, there's quite a lot of information, so we've included a link down down below for you to read up everything that you need to know go check that out hey guys if you're enjoying the daily catch up podcast do remember to drop us a sub and hit the notification button so uh, a topic that is on a lot of people's minds uh, although for many people you have varying degrees of like how much knowledge or background like or how much you care about the whole situation lah. but on february 24th russia invaded ukraine and uh not according to russia though in, according to russia they are saving ukraine they're re- reclaiming what is theirs uh, and reuniting one nation. Uh. Do you guys are you guys aware of like why why Russia did that? I think so. If you can bring it back to 1945. <laughs> 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 this was an like elaborate scheme. <laughs> Just lightening the mood, yeah. Um I think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know whether I'll go back as far back as, as you went, right? But was that the Soviet Union was or, or NATO was set up to fight the Soviet Union, something like that, right? And then when the Soviet Union <laughs> disbanded, there was also a, a deal, right? Like you, like a, you stop expanding. Like there was a Warsaw Pact that formed a, a, a kind of like a buffer between Soviet, ish, Russia, ish. NATO, and, and Russia, lah. Uh, nice NATO jumper coming in with the info. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah and, Everyone and take history. <laughs> but since then, NATO has kind of been like expanding and like taking over more and more land, which makes Russia feel more and more threatened. Mm. And then so now with Ukraine cozying up with the US and with NATO again, Russia is like kind of taking the opportunity to like. D- move they feel in. threatened, yeah. In that mm. sense, so not wrong. Actually, very very close, but. I think a lot of people don't realize like why NATO was formed also, right? So I think if we cast ourselves back to <laughs> 1945, but I'll keep this short because I think you guys covered really the main points, right? 1945, World War II uh, ended and it was thanks to US entering the war, but also some uh, some temporary allegiance la, between the US, uh, the Western forces and mm. Russia. And so because like they, they won the war, right? They decided to split Germany or specifically they split Berlin. East Berlin and West Berlin. That's why you have the Berlin Wall. Nice. And like West Berlin was controlled by Western forces and then Eastern Berlin. East Berlin was like controlled by... by Eastern the, forces? By the USSR. No, North. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, basically what happened was that tr- after that, right, things got very tense because um, Russia was trying to like kind of spread its ideology of socialism. US was trying to spread its ideology of democracy to the point where US even said that uh, at that point in time, right, we will spread democracy so far that we will help any country that is fighting communism, which is why they entered the Korean War, for example. And it's why South Korea is a democracy. And it's how they lost the Vietnam War and why Vietnam is still <laughs> communist uh, in that sense. So it was things were very tense and then it led to the Cold War. And the Cold War isn't called Cold War because it was cold. It was because uh, no, no, way. no fighting happened, right? It was like it was like cold shoulder kind of thing uh, between these two temporary allies. So there was a whole missile crisis, right? US was uh, moving missiles to France to like point their, their guns at like Russia. And then Russia was moving uh, missiles to Cuba, which was friendly with Russia at that point of time. Mm. So they could point missiles at, um, at the US. Mm. And then it got very, very tense. Uh, and during this period, basically, 
during the Cold War, US formed NATO with like a bunch of different Western European forces as a right. defensive measure. Or that's what they say. La. It was purely a defensive measure. So Western media was so strong that the whole thing was just called the Cuban Missile Crisis. But yes. what about the French Missile Crisis? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So they formed NATO with the, with the Western forces and to Russia, they're like, okay, la, fine. Western forces, it's far away from Russia. We will form our own mm. like pack. And that's where the Warsaw Pact came from also. So they formed uh, with the Eastern Bloc and then they had the Western Bloc. Along the years, NATO started to accumulate more and more countries under, under their membership. To Russia, it was like, this is this is wrong. La. This is a threat. Why are you coming closer east? America is saying, it's open membership. It's about autonomy. They are the ones that choosing. We're, we're not mm. recruiting. However, when Russia kind of brought up the idea of wanting to join NATO, the US was a bit like... Oh, Russia wanted to join NATO? There was a period of time. Yeah. Oh, so interesting. Oh my God, they really put their ego down for this, huh? That, Back that, then, I, I can't yeah, remember whether it's Bill yeah. Clinton's time or something. Right. Actually, it's, no, it wasn't always tense because there have been NATO-Russia agreements mm-hmm. before. They worked together on, on different things like to mm. clamp down on like, like terrorism and, like, and like stuff like that, right? So they've worked together, but then obviously things got a lot more tense over the years. And then it really sparked off when Georgia, which is very close to um, Russia, joined NATO. Yeah. And then when Ukraine finally showed some interest in joining NATO, Russia was like, whoa, mm. hold up. Why are you coming so far east? Why, why are you coming so close to my border? Because mm. once, you, once, you, once you hit Ukraine, that's like crazy. Ukraine is like the largest um, European country in that region. But okay. I think like the most accurate or like I think funny TikTok explaining this whole situation <laughs> that I saw was this, like the mother, right, who is USA, pushing the child who is Ukraine to go and take this slipper and then hit the father that was, <laughs> that was sleeping. <laughs> then the father is Russia. Yeah. So the father wake up and turn around and want to chase them on. The mother ran out of the room and closed the door and left the child inside. Right. Mm. Then after that, Russia it's and Ukraine. True. It feels pretty f***ed over. It really <laughs> broke my heart when, when, the, when the Ukrainian president was like, the, the world left us alone to fight this battle. What's quite interesting is that a lot of people don't know that the UK has actually been training Ukraine soldiers for like the last 10 years. Right. And like someone tracked, right? So you know, like airport tracker, you can track all the airplanes mm. and everything, right? Uh, they track a lot of military planes transporting like ammo and weapons to Ukraine over right. the last three months. That's how they like, because they already detected intel that Ukraine, uh, Russia wanted to like invade Ukraine. Right. On a lighter note, there's also <laughs> a tracking of planes, like all avoiding the airspace between Russia, yeah. uh, Ukraine and Russia. And, and Russia. Right? Then Air India, cutting through. <laughs> <laughs> the the, 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 only, the <laughs> one and only plane <laughs> <laughs> cutting through the airspace. It's damn brave, yeah. <laughs> but on a heavier note, aside from sending soldiers, right, US has been sending tons of weapons and all yeah. that to Ukraine, mm. which like propagates the whole, like the mother make the child yeah. take the slipper to go and hit the father. And it's like, it's no joke. It's like half a billion dollars worth of military equipment mm. every year for like the last three or four yeah. years or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's quite crazy. It's what they do. But uh, honestly, yeah. right, I mean, as a Singaporean, which is very far away, like it's literally the upside of the world, right? <laughs> I don't really care. Mm. Like, like I, because I it's so, so sad, far you know, away. I don't know why. I was like thinking, yeah, okay. I mean, f- the, the the my first thought was, oh, yo, f- crypto crash, right? Then like investment <laughs> crash, then the S and P five hundred dip. Then I'm like, oh, sian. Then after I felt an immense guilt for thinking about my own personal finance, right? <laughs> yeah. Then after I felt very like immense sadness, I was like sian the whole day because of this war. And I was telling Pat about it. I was like, I don't know why. But I feel damn sian. Like even Ukraine. even your message on the on the company group chat was like, hey guys, please go spend time with your loved one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was the fing day that I felt damn troubled by it. Eh. Guys, if World War Three breaks out, none, none of the things we yeah, do will matter. Like, <laughs> <laughs> For a moment I was worried because <laughs> When the threat of that war kind of started, then there was the China Taiwan thing, yeah. Yeah. and then if China attacked Taiwan, then India would take the chance to attack China, and then that's why it felt like a World War Three situation, which was what scared me. But then after right. that, it kind of seemed quite contained. Which while well, R.I.P. to the lives, I don't see how I'm personally connected to that. Or aside from giving money, right? There's right. nothing I can do to help. What am I gonna do? Uh, tell you, mm. which is what America's doing. <laughs> <laughs> tell you, the latest update is that they are supposedly like. Increasing their negotiating bombing. talks, right? So, so the president of Ukraine has spoken to Russian officials uh, at the Belarus border, right? And like, uh, apparently, it was they quite spoke at the border. Yeah, but yeah. I, I mean, not now. Put no, in a, a room like, in the border. Yeah. 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 So, so there was talks between Ukraine and Russia, but then on the other hand, Ukraine also just submitted its um application to the EU. Okay. And mm. so, um, what does that mean? Well, they want to join the EU. They want to join the EU. It takes many, many years. 
there was false headlines because the application was accepted but not yet approved. So everyone was going, oh my god, it's been accepted, accepted. But oh, actually, it takes like two, three right. years to be approved. And a country can't get approved during war. No, but what does being accepted and approved mean? It, well, it's closer aligned to like Western. But there is no Europe. defense, right? No, uh, so, so it's not a defense pack, right? It's an economic pack. Yeah. Whereas NATO is that defense pack. Right. I think a lot of people are theorizing why did Putin do this, right? Mm. And a lot of them are saying it's because to him, he sees this not as a war, but as a unification. Like he's trying to mm. save Ukraine from this. He's trying to put his own people, Kremlin friendly people in administration, uh, in the administration so that he can make everyone one people. Or. It, it made sense when it came to the Donbass region of Ukraine, which is the, the region that's closest to, to Russia. right? Mm. Which shares the border. They shares the border. And mm. those people tend to be a little bit more Russia leaning. People were like 50-50 about it. They speak Russian instead of Ukrainian. But then when he invaded Ukraine, it came from every corner known to men. I mean, except the <laughs> Western border. And it was quite crazy. <laughs> la. Another thing that I read that was quite interesting to me was there were some Ukrainians who been writing on social media that what you don't see, and they're very impressed because the social media algorithm is actually al- algorithm is actually working in their positively. Favor. The most viral content now right, is things like on TikTok or like uh, Facebook saying, here's how to dismantle a, a, a tank or like here's oh. how to like uh, demobilize oh, wow. a tank. Here's how to create Molotov cocktails. Here's how to fight back. So mm. like- Look at TikTokers doing their <laughs> thing, huh? The citizens themselves are taking it upon themselves to fight back, which is why like, yeah. I think people were saying that Putin was very angry because he thought it was going to be very easy. Mm. If they were roll over yeah. after six days, but it has been actually very, very difficult because the Ukrainians are fighting for something. Yeah. There was this thing that went viral, right? Pretty viral about this um, Russian mother checking up on her soldier's son and say, hey, are you still at the yeah. border? Still Don't know at- whether real or not mm. though. No, there, but there are many complimentary reports talking mm. about many oh. of the Russians really didn't know they were doing an invasion. Mm. Oh. Because where I believe what Putin say is that there is very strong kinship between Russia and Ukraine. It's like asking Singaporeans to attack Malaysia if Malaysia don't attack us first. It's like, oh, cannot be. Yeah. Cannot be, I will go there and shoot you. Like, cannot be. I I yeah. go there for fun. Eh. Like, yeah. my memories, of, like all my heartbreaks and unhappiness are all made in Singapore. You know what I mean? My best memories of traveling is in overseas countries like like Malaysia. Ma. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and so, um, there was this exchange about how the mom was asking her son, I, I used to have the military exercise at the border and then the son was like, uh, no mom. He's like, oh, I want to send you something. Where are you? He's like, we're not here. When we are in Ukraine now, we're invading Ukraine. And we were told that they are they will welcome us, um, but it's not. And they are standing in front, uh, they are going under our tanks to stop us or some shit like that. Yeah. Wow. Like, oh They're throwing God. their bodies under our tanks to stop us. From yeah. yeah. Wow, this f- I feel like there are a whole lot of of theories as to why this war is happening right now. And I get that like a lot of attention is focusing on Ukraine because that's where the war is happening. And obviously we commend the, the Ukrainian people for standing up and fighting for their own home, lah, right? Yeah. But, but I feel like the more important conversation or, or the more important thing for people to really look at, right? Is why this war is happening. And I think if you look back like far enough or you do a bit more research, right? You'll realize that Russia right now is being painted as the bad guy. I'm not mm. saying that they are the good guy. I think I don't think anybody who starts a war is a bad guy. But good why guy. are they put anyone who starts a war is a good guy. Oh, it's a good guy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but why did they have to resort to this? Mm. Right? So then I'm trying to question and look for motives like a- everywhere and as a- and one of the major players here who is still on the sidelines is the US. Mm. Right? And US has been known throughout history, right? Throughout our lived history, right, to have started countless mm. of wars for personal gain in foreign countries, yeah. which mm. is like f-ing ridiculous. Eh? Then you brought up Georgia earlier, right? And so like I was watching this video about how several years before Ukraine, Russia actually invaded Georgia first. Yeah. And they used very similar strategies by, t- by taking control of like two smaller, um, I think two smaller cities, ma- mm. main cities or whatever. They employed the same strategy. It was a NATO country also, right? But I don't think US came to help them. No- nothing was really done there. Really? The Pre-nado? news also never really, I don't really announced. I don't think a lot was done. I also think that the media didn't cover it as much as they are covering Ukraine. Right. Then we fast forward to a few years later, I think there was the discovery of a lot of natural oils, right? On Ukraine soil. soil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Russia is supposedly the one of the main suppliers of natural oils and gases to mm. Europe. Yeah. If Ukraine has this, they are potentially going to damage the economy of Russia a lot. 
mm. right? 40% of Russia's revenue is from oil. Yeah. yeah. And then we look at economic motives. US has entered uh, so many other countries, other mm. excuses, right? Uh, using various mm. excuses like terrorism and then trying to um, liberate their, their people and all that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, they are going there to extract natural gases and, mm. and make money out of all of this. So then it feels to me like who is going to gain? Someone we talk about. I wouldn't say make money. La. I think that's a very, very simplistic mindset. I mean, but, but are, it's about power. It's securing about essential supplies mm, so that mm. they cannot be... Uh, but then now, right now, if they do this, so so to me, how I, how I see it, right, is that the US, NATO is also belongs to the West, right? It feels to me like, at least this is my theory, that they are really trying to, over the last few years, they have forced the hand of Russia by pressuring them constantly, Mm. by increasing the amount of military power that they are pushing towards the Russian border Mm. and forcing Russia to do something. And then now that Russia has finally done something, they are kind of trapped already. Then US is going to wait and all the marketing, uh, the media, right, and the marketing for this, right, is to paint Russia in the worst light possible to the entire world so that when the US finally goes in to liberate Ukraine, mm. we are all going to be on their side. And mm. we won't see it, but when the US liberates Ukraine, then they're going to bring in their forces to say, we're going to have to put our military here, we're going to have to set up base camp here to protect you and maintain this border. Mm-hmm. And then, hey, we're going to help you rebuild the infrastructure also to mm. extract these natural gases, right, to rebuild our economy, but we get a cut. Oh, I really think US is the enemy of this whole fucking thing, yeah. Agreed. I believe that they are the instigator yeah. of this whole fucking thing. But I don't think that was ever in doubt. Like, did you hear Putin's speech when he addressed how would you feel if you were Russia? No. Actually, I look at that thing, right? And then for a moment there, right? Makes I'm like, sense, yeah. Hey, okay. Because <laughs> basically, he talked about the, the pact, right? And uh, talked yeah. about how um, uh, when Ukraine actually had a huge stockpile of nuclear weapons post World War and they surrendered it. To Russia, they gave it to Russia because they don't want to be a nuclear power. Yep. And then Russia guaranteed their safety. And he's talking about how NATO come closer and closer and closer towards to conflicting con- like countries that always butt hit yep. for decades already. And he said, and then you want to put missiles at my border. So then he just said, and he repeated his this same analogy, like it's always a TikTok look, like, right? Um, he repeated the same thing as like, what if we have a military base in Mexico and we just point our missiles at you or in Canada and we have missiles pointing at you. How will the US react? Feel about that. Yeah. Is it not right to then protect your own country? Mm. Where I think the politics went south was that US with Ukrainian allegiance put Putin in a position whereby he has to step down in a way whereby he will really lose his teeth and not just to the international community but to his own people as well. Because war is good for politics, right? Mm. Um, or the threat of war is better for politics than war itself. Um, Unites a country. And, and so US and Ukraine and together with NATO and the EU put him in a position whereby he either needs to really walk the talk, which is invade and bomb, right? Yeah. Or really step down and lose all credibility. Yeah. And, and I think it's bad politics that got him in that situation. You know what I mean? It's that, but I think like, so I was reading a Bloomberg like magazine issue, mm. like I think two months ago, and I think there was already talks of Putin losing popularity in Russia already. Mm. And so there was quite a lot of pressure, not just externally, but internally to like do something. La. But yeah. even now people are protesting. Right? I yeah. think a quote that I heard that was quite interesting is that the Russian people don't like it because this is Putin's war, it's not Russia's war. Yes, mm. exactly that. Which yeah. was quite interesting because it really just sounds like uh, they kind of force his hand and then for his, in a sense, pride or like yeah. ego, right? he yeah. has to go and invade. And then so many innocent lives are lost. Yeah, I agree. But I also think that that's mani- slightly manipulated by the West. Because like the reports of the protests, right, from mm. what I understand, mm. is heavily covered right, to depict that that Russia is yeah. separate from Putin. Yeah. Mm. But I've also read other sources that have said that that's only 25% of the Russian population. Yeah. Mm. And the majority are actually yeah, still and, and in support. If I'm not Putin. wrong, within the same speech, Putin also talked about how many countries have US invaded in the past few years versus yeah. Russia. Mm. Yeah. 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 No, I mean like, look, like again, I'm, I'm like not even choosing sides. I think US has been completely wrong to like, like invade a lot of these countries with like very poor excuses, like, right? Mm. But I think nothing can excuse Russia. Like you said, like, nothing can excuse Russia from invading a sovereign nation. Mm. Like I think Jade but, but what would you expect them to do, right? Like if their hand is being forced? 
that's still not a good enough excuse to yeah invade la, and mean, to kill. Like they're just bombs, like just coming out. Was of it nowhere. once we reached the political crux? Was it inevitable or was it expected that Putin would invade? Yes, I expected him to do it. But if had he done it, then yes, he's wrong, la. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like it's like there was an energy that Jade like posted on on Facebook, which is like, I mean, I'm I'm paraphrasing, but it's as though like you broke up your ex, and then he finds you with like another like person, and then he beats you up. Like that doesn't make it right for him. No, to but then you in up. this case, it is more like I am with uh, okay, like, I don't know, I this guy that I I like, or we have a good relationship, right? Yeah. Okay, no, in the context of a relationship, maybe, and then this girl is constantly cheating on you. Mm. Like I say, okay, I won't do it anymore, and then I do it again, <laughs> and I do it again, I do it again. Right. Then I catch you in bed. Then after that, I give you one tight slap or no, something. No, but see, is the, that the boyfriend's fault? The difference here is that the boyfriend right thinks that you have a good like you have a relationship with the person, but the person doesn't think you have a relationship with the guy. Right. Yeah, so then this guy is delusional and then he suddenly okay, sees okay. the girl <laughs> okay, with okay, another okay. guy and then comes and beat you up. Which is wrong like Like that violence is absolutely not like no matter how shit the situation is, I don't think so it's invasion like, yeah, is justified. Like, f- Russia for invading Ukraine. US is right. definitely not faultless. US instigated that shit. Ukraine's paying for it. Yep. But on some warp level, I'm also looking at what's happening in Ukraine and I feel like the warmth of it also. Mm. Do you know there was a Singapore actor there? They all see. Yes. I, I saw there was a Money Shop article on this. There's this veteran actor in Singapore that just tell people that basically his, his wife is a Ukrainian nurse, and then he just say, "Oh, I'm I'm fine, I'm well," and he told the media that he cannot leave without like staying to fight. Mm. Right. Mm. Yeah. There are also quite a few like uh reports of like people uh, I think British and I'm not sure what other countries are joining the Ukrainian army as like volunteer forces and all that. Wow. Quite encouraging. Yeah, I think even for Singapore, like there were Singaporean men that were saying like, can I go and fight for Ukraine? Ma? Yeah, no, it's funny that you say that because uh, Vivian Balakrishnan actually uh, responded to people who, uh, Singaporeans who asked whether they can go and join the yeah. war. And then he said, uh, no, Singaporeans should be fighting for Singapore. La. Well, people are yeah. upset about that actually, like him saying that. I think the people that wanted to go clearly are upset. La. Then people that don't want to go and thinking those f***ers are crazy for going <laughs> yeah. yeah, But they, he said a lot of things. So then there were quite a lot of things to like break down. La. So I think the first thing that he mentioned was that Singapore will impose export controls. Which means what? So like sanctions almost of sorts, mm. but specifically of like uh, items that can be used as weapons against Ukraine. Which I think is quite monumental because there have been a lot of different incidents in the world where people are saying, hey, like Singapore should sanction this, Singapore mm. should sanction that, and they never really did. And this was one instance in which Singapore actually took a stance. When I when I listen to, to their, their Singapore stance on it, right? I, I'm sad. But I understand. As they said like about we, our stance. That we cannot do anything. Yeah. No, as in what what would you have the government do though? Like send no, armed forces? No, that uh. is the answer. The, what they are what yeah, they are yeah. saying is right. But it's just sad because we cannot do anything. Yeah. And I'm trying to constantly look at it from a right, right, right. from a very like, human would, way. Would, would be mm. nice if Singapore has like nuclear weapons that we can press a button and uh, just help them bomb out, right? Uh, Wait, so for uh, those who you, don't know, like what are the what is Singapore's stance? So Vivian, um, Vivian, Minister yeah. Vivian <laughs> Balakrishnan, uh, he, he broke it down into like four lessons like, that Singapore can take away from like the whole situation in Ukraine, right? So the first he said, we must never ever lose the ability to defend and look after ourselves. So like what, basically what he's saying is that like international law and diplomatic principles are not enough. Like they're essential, but they're not enough. He's saying that our army needs to be strong lah. Is it? Essentially, He's but saying, also- stop shooting on NS uh, And every time <laughs> you want to buy war plane at time, please don't complain that we're using taxpayers' money to play war games. Correct. Because no amount of diplomacy can save a country in this situation. Right. Yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, it's true. I saw quite an interesting comment on, on Reddit about that. That was like, because Ukraine has put up such a fight, right? These five days has bought time for them for sanctions to be imposed, for Russia to feel a burn, for diplomatic solutions to come in. But yeah. if they mm. had not had that, especially in Singapore, we're so tiny, right? Yeah. They attack us and then it's done. There's no time for diplomacy. You, you, you look yep. at how, because when, when Russia, sorry, I interrupt, no, no. but oh, when no. Russia was amassing troops, right? Ukraine obviously had to try and build their troops as well. So when the invasion began, there was a lot of lives lost in that sense. Mm. And so Ukraine lost a lot of military assets right from the get-go. But the only thing they have going for them now is that their people are rushing to enlist. They just see the videos about like women and children yeah. making Molotov cocktails. Yeah. That's f***ing wild. That's mad. And then like the reporter was asking them because I'm not exposed to Eastern Europe on the media that much, right? Mm. So in my head, like whenever like Russia come out, like Moscow, then you, you know, they use the f- yellow, yellow lard, right? Then it's just like sandy and shit, like like the same lard they use for Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> so then when, when you go to Ukraine, Ukraine, they City, just sit right? there and then they wear like nice, like tank top, scarf, all that. Then they were just talking among their friends. Then, then they use their hands to like, 
pack Mint some powder or some shit to make Molotov cocktail. Then I'm like, then they're like, oh, uh, obviously this is not how I wanted to spend my Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Just like another she, day. she told that to the media, but yeah, but we need to do this that kind of shit. Eh. Wow, that's like crazy. Don't you think that your observation is a it's 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 a representation of how disconnected we are from what real world looks la, like? Uh-huh. Because like we are we are all born in like peacetime. Right? Mm. We are all born in peacetime. We are in one, we are and in, in a Singapore, safe country. A safe country. Like we are so disconnected from yeah. the realities of war. To be very honest. Like when you were young and then when, when Singapore started their whole like uh, total defense, then a the five defense. We have no right, we then, have then no Then the say. military defense, you're like, okay. You know, like economic we defense. We get it. Okay. Then like the psychological defense, you be like, mm, really though, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and I didn't really get it. Because like you young that time, right? And then you like to watch the like, Kung Fu show, like, got war, I will fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then as you grow up, then you meet people talking in army, right? Then don't say fight the war and go and die. They don't even want to sweat for army, right? Yeah. They don't even want to travel. Mm. Long distance for the army, right? Then they like, oh, I walk out and show surrender. They start cracking some kind of shit jokes, right? Then you realize psychological defense is the only f- thing keeping Ukraine going, yeah, right now. Mm. Bringing that uh, like back to Singapore, right? Like if say one of our neighbors from the north, your motherland, or neighbors <laughs> from the west were to invade Singapore, I'd probably lose. Like, would you guys have that same resolve that Ukrainians? Yeah, to, to, dive, to die for the country. Yeah, yeah like, like would you guys fight, die for the country? So, yeah. Pat asked me last week also. Then huh. like, yes sir. Like it's my answer. Like I will tell huh. her like, weren't you there when we did the swearing in? Cause like, but it's hard to say. At the end of the day, when the bomb start flying in, I got a bomb shelter in my living room. Eh. Maybe I just go inside. You won't be in your home though. <laughs> yeah, you'll be caught down already. Yeah la, I mean, hopefully la. Like we- I would like to think I will fight and die. Eh, but really, I, I also acknowledge that hard to say one. No, because in like if I'm not wrong, right, the US sent like about three thousand American troops to the borders of of Western Ukraine, not into Ukraine, mm-hmm, but Western mm-hmm, Ukraine, mm-hmm. right? And the purpose of them being placed there is so that if Russia were to invade, like full force invasion, and keep pushing, if they were to push past Ukraine, if they kill the American soldiers there, one of the three thousand or mm. the three thousand, they are basically the excuse for America to then launch a full. F- Full scale attack on it's like mm. that guy hit me Russia. first. Now I can beat him. Up. Yeah, but what if you were the soldier? Like if you are one of the three thousand, would you be like, okay, I go, mm. or would you be like, why me? Or like I don't want to die. I don't want to be there to die for your war. But I don't think their culture is like this. Eh? Sure lah, because they want to be deployed. Much, like, uh, right? They really which, want to deploy. Which one. brings me to question: Why are you willing to die for your country? I feel like Russian soldiers are more likely to feel that way. Right. And and it and it kind of shows like there are videos yeah, of yeah, like yeah. like like civilians right just blocking the roads from the tanks going through right and then they have guns right and then they're just like they're like so unsure of what to do because they also f- it feels like yeah. they don't want to be part of this war. But yeah, like them shit like. But would you would you die for your country? <laughs> I oh no, him, uh. <laughs> I really don't think so. Eh. Like mm. I cannot see it because I am already so conflicted with the concept of nas- like nations and national identity. Right. Mm. So it doesn't make sense for me to die because another country wants to stay in power or they have some economical gains No, or exactly. So it only, you would die for your country if they are invading Singapore, you will fight. Right? <laughs> <laughs> not, not like, I, not like do Singapore. Do I have a choice? You, you have a choice. You can say, run away. Let's say no, you have a choice. Off, uh. Let's say you can hide with your family. La, if, whether if uh. Singapore really lose, then you'll still die. La. No, if Singapore doesn't, if lose doesn't mean you die. Right? I mean, but let's say like you still die or you go under occupation. No? Occupation. Any time. <laughs> okay, because okay. I don't give a f- who is in charge? What, like, what if it's like the Japanese occupation where like they are torturing? Yeah. Then we will survive, lor. Will you? Will you? Will you? Like in a heartbeat, eh, I think. Oh, uh, I'll be you, no, yes, it, <laughs> you, you survive this. You never cannot mind. F- I cannot mind f- until crazy, really. Eh. You're aware of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, clearly, lah. <laughs> when they do the sumpa thing, it's f- awkward. You get, you know when they sumpa you not on day one, eh. Mm. Like five minutes in, eh, you still miss your mom. Yeah. Your girlfriend behind you want cry. Then they make you swear you gonna die for a country. Like, ha, huh? I barely know you, eh. Yeah. I haven't even learned how to hold a rifle, eh. So, so I was watching a a very old like World War One movie or whatever, lah, Okay. And one scene, right? This guy was like trying to put together a very old school like bomb. Mm. Or, like I don't know what it was, lah. Then my brother sitting next to me, he just say, eh, they also teach me that in the army, eh. Oh. How many years has it been, right? <laughs> Infantry ground level battle, right? Hasn't been updated that much, eh? Yeah. And but they're still making more. It cocktail. makes me understand exactly, and mm. it really makes me realize that infantry, especially, ah, uh, is f-ing useless. You are there are you infantry? as a pod. No, I don't know what the f- I mean. Uh. You are there as a pod. <laughs> I got reserved in two weeks. Uh, <laughs> you are You're there about as to a find pod. Out. Yeah, they moved me to a new unit. Okay, no, important. <laughs> uh, you are really there, right? The numbers, right? 
you're there as just pawns for these people to play on it. They don't really expect you to live or survive or do whatever the f***. The, the, the real battle happens on completely different levels, yeah. right? No, but I think that's- You're not wrong lah, you're not wrong lah. But in a sense, that's why the war is fought in the air, it's fought in the sea and then fought yeah. in by uh, and then finally, special forces yeah, insertion. Yeah, yeah, then when places yeah. are secured, then the infantry comes in. Like what John was alluding to, right? I think there's a difference. If like Singapore were to invade a country for ideology, right? Mm. I think uh, people may struggle not, to feel like, why, are you, why am I risking my life for this? But I think if a country were to invade my country, for example, if I was right. in Indonesia, then I would feel like, yeah, let's go. Ah. What happens? Ah? Would you go back to take up arms? Let's say Singapore is invading Malaysia. Would you go back to take up arms? We have to do one more episode here first. We filmed 14 episodes so at least we can <laughs> yeah, get through yeah, a few months. Yeah, yeah. I, I, feel like, I feel like what's the reasons, lah, right? Like, was it, you know, who instigated what? Who, who say, lah, say your f*** about water supply. Huh, I think like that one. Uh. You're threatened to f*** about water supply. Then we're like, you know what? One too many times, they might actually f- do it. We're going to bomb you after the wood reservoir. No, but what's interesting with Singapore right, is that Singapore cannot afford to take a defensive position. So whenever someone's going to invade them, right, or invade Singapore, or invade then, us, then we'll evade the question. Yeah. Singapore always attacks <laughs> first. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's offense as a Go defensive yeah, strategy. We learn that right? We learn that yeah. So, so see, then... Right? <laughs> no, no so this is why I think it's so interesting because we are putting him on the spot like this and it's so difficult to answer because mm. the answer, the question is stupid to begin with. Mm. Why oh, are we being me. divided? <laughs> no, why are we being divided by mm. nations? Yeah, yeah. Like why why we cannot why can we, we not? That's why Russia is trying to undivide with Ukraine. That's also why ISIS was no, born. Do you like play like yeah, but you Counter Strike and ask yourself why are we shooting each other? Then. But ISIS was also was formed because America was targeting nations because of a terrorist attack, and then they say okay lah, let's be a, a because group. ISIS destroyed the original country and divided it, right? And then they dismantled the local military. Mm. So then the local military had nowhere to go and then the situation was shit. So then they combined together with these rebellion forces and then it became ISIS. The point of this is that, right? All of this is for some strange power yeah. game. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's a weird ego. game that we are playing. Yeah. 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 What about you? Will you die for your country? Will Me? you fight and risk mm. death for your country? There's no reason to die for your country. Lah. Sure. But if I know how to... Uh, <laughs> I think I will. No, you are who you are now. La. We go to war. La. Yeah, but la. I got no skills. Do we look like we are ready? <laughs> Whoa. Like, these are the people that are going to defend your country. Eh. Like, hey, I feel pretty good about myself. <laughs> <thing next year. laughs> what, are, what are Balakrishna's other three so points? So the other three pointers <laughs> that you yeah. mentioned. The second important uh, lesson, right, is that uh, we do not choose. I, I think this was the most important one when it came to the sanctions, which is that Singapore does not choose sides. We uphold principles. And so like the reason why the sanctions happen and not for like un- any other situation is because small countries must avoid becoming sacrificial points, especially in this particular situation. Uh, and so basically what he's saying is that like he's trying to, the, the principle that Singapore is upholding is that a sovereign nation cannot just be like invaded, like, invaded just like this, mm. la, especially with the context of neighbors around Singapore, right? Yeah. This stems from something that's very interesting and it's almost an exact same quote that's paraphrased by Lee Kuan Yew a million fucking years ago, right? When he was on tour in the US and many people like to ask him whether he is uh, left-leaning or right-leaning. And he says that he doesn't believe in ideologies. He just believes in policies. Mm. So you do it and you will have to keep reiterating. And if it doesn't work anymore, don't cling on to that. And it's such a simple common sense thing after you heard it, Mm. you know? But before I heard it, right? If you ask me I left or right, I can tell you. Mm. You know, then after you realize they can't be they can't be just fing left and right in this life, eh? Also, yeah. I thought it was a very, very clever diplomatic like thing to say because Singapore is friendly to both US and China. Yeah. And, and China has backed comes. Russia. Oh, no, no, but the left to right is uh, Yeah, yeah, no, 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 for sure. Yeah. But I think like on, on a different level, like it was quite smart. La. So like if mm. in the future there is any particular sanctions. It, it, yeah, it always astounds me that Singapore can go on like press tours and foreign ministers, right? Then they will ask them like, oh, like which side do you take? And then Singapore will just go out there and f***ing shamelessly say, oh, we take both sides because both sides has great benefits for us. Yeah. Don't make us take sides. And like everyone's cool with it. Eh. Yeah. And, and that, that f***ing astounds me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Third lesson, unity. If the country is united, no foreign interference. Let me just quote him directly. Lah, huh? Internal mm. divisions can be exploited by adversaries, especially Sounds in the pretty internet. Branded. It's not. It's not. It's really yeah, not. It's really not. Uh, but especially in the internet age, right? So, you know, foreign interference, mm. things like that. And so um, domestic policies must stop at 
our shots. Like. And so that's basically the reason why the government imposed certain things like the foreign interference. So this is actually um, like when Singapore was in had a lot of tensions with Malaysia at that time. Sorry, I'm just inferring here. No, no. There were opposition members and local uh, activists that actually went over and, and when there's a point where Mahathir was make, is back in power and making threats to Singapore again, then Singapore what, flashback PTSD, right? <laughs> and they flew there to meet Dr. Mahathir and say that what you did for your country was great. Oh. I hope you can uh, come and influence Singapore and give Mahathir that notion that Singaporeans want to be liberated from our government and that like we're looking for someone like Mahathir to come and help us. Right. Yeah. Can you imagine Singaporeans that will do that to Singapore in the sake of politics though? If at the end of the day you look at how Russia right now is calling for the Russian government to stop the war. Russia is calling for the Russian government. Ah, okay. Yeah. Isn't that one of the more impactful news? You know what I'm saying? As yeah. opposed to Ukraine say like but Russia. But it's, is wrong, it's really so scary to stand up to them though, given that I mean they've arrested yeah, yeah. how many people now already? Uh, 4,000, 5,000. Mm. And it's like in a country like Russia where you can be assassinated you, yeah. for just opposing Putin. Yeah. It's not just in Russia. La. Yeah, you can be assassinated anywhere. <laughs> Not in Singapore, but notoriously That's known, what you think, uh, okay. But I think it's it, it is quite crazy. It, it is in, incredibly brave, a uh, brave, even if that rumor is true or not, of Russians to come out in defiance of like Putin to like say that right. mm. The fourth lesson, which is quite related to like the first two, is that uh, standing up for our national interest may come at some cost. And basically, what he's saying is that to to safeguard the sovereignty of a nation, it comes with like sacrifice and pain, la. That's actually interesting because I was actually kind of wondering why did it take us so long to c- c- come out and, and like say something against to, to condemn the government. Like, and I had this small okay, tinfoil hat, right? Conspiracy that mm. it was after China stepped out of the vote. And then we thought that, okay, we won't offend China by doing this. So now it's safe to do this. And then we said it. But then like, I think like now looking at the bigger picture of how Singapore, like at the end of the day, right? It's about protecting us. It's about protecting mm. our yeah. own national mm. interest, right? And this right. makes a lot of sense. La. Mm. So it doesn't. So it, then it doesn't matter whether or not we are really waiting for China to like say something or not say something. But mm. at the end of the day, how are we playing it to safeguard our citizens? Survive. Then that when it made, that's when it made more sense to me. Only <laughs> JP mm. said he prefers occupation. <laughs> 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 no, you occupy or die. What's the one is you alive? Eh? I don't. Know, another fun fact: if you're not really following the news, that the Ukrainian president that's doing an amazing charismatic job right now. I uh, used to be an entertainer. Was an actor. He was a comedian. His, yeah, and he's shot to fame. To go into to run for politics was because he played a role as Ukrainian president, and oh. then he gave he gave a monologue about how we are forced to choose between one piece of shit and another piece of shit, and one of us are going to pick shit A, and not because we want shit A, it's because shit A because we think shit, uh, A is better than B, and that's and then the country fell in love with the monologue and asked him to run for office, and then he won, and then now he's fighting a war leh. This f- man, hey, but there's him. a conspiracy about him fighting the war. So like, apparently there were photos that came out with him like in the uniform gear mm. and all that, right? From years ago, one. Yeah, oh, but but I still, like, he's yeah. he's still in the country. Like he hasn't fled yet. Yeah, and I think like so, some uh, Ukrainian tweeted like whole a whole long thread. I'm trying to like summarize it, but, but mm. I think they were saying that last time, right? Ukraine didn't really have something to fight for, and they were always like this Russian little brother and whatnot, and like they always felt like a pariah of some, because they were caught in between, like, right? And now with Zelensky, right, they finally have something to fight for because they see him staying behind. They see him rallying the troops and yeah. saying to US, you know, like I you don't need- protect him, eh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Imagine if like, if you are like, ah, I don't want shit on you. Hey, hey, come on. If like you're drawn, right? And then let's say they be call <laughs> you, they go to your himself. house and they grab you already, right? Uh, I'm and the president. Okay. They'll be like, no, no don't take me. You're going to protect the. You're going to protect the president's residence, or you're going to protect some government building residence. Uh. Yeah, you're quite sad. Like, why is that life worth more than me? And then they're sitting in like, a car room, they're standing outside, and all that stuff. But you look <laughs> at how much of a cultural role this current president is playing for Ukraine, right? Hmm. His people really need to make sure he's alive, eh? and it's not cause of duty sake or oath to the president. It's eh? for morale. Yeah, it's because if he dies, right, the country lose, eh? Yeah. Which brings me to war propaganda. Is that not so interesting? Yeah, it's yeah. so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always very, very fascinated. I actually, I actually quite like it. Let me say this Ukrainian example. I think it's quite famous of the old lady going up to the Russian soldier and then giving him some flower seeds. So then he asked, he, he went up to, to the Russian soldier and, and said, can you put these sunflower seeds in your pocket so that when you die, flowers will grow on our soil. Oh my god, so ominous for an old lady. Mm. No, because that's the only thing good that you will contribute to. Yeah, that's the only thing good yeah. you will contribute to us. Wow. No, the other one better. The, <laughs> the, the, the flower one. 
Oh, <laughs> yeah, so back in oh, the day. You cannot sleep, yeah. No, no, you hear this one. This one really cannot sleep. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go back all the way further than World War II. World War One. I. I think in, in Britain, there's no such thing as conscription, ma. so they really had to rely on like a volunteer army. Yeah. And so, how they started getting people to go and sign up and volunteer for the war is they created this white feather brigade where they recruited women like young like beautiful women kind of thing and then they gave them like white feathers right to go out and distribute to men who are wearing civilian uniform because that means that they didn't volunteer to go and fight so then they will give them the feather right put in their pocket or what, and then they'll say hey you're such a coward like why are you doing all the women's work staying mm-hmm. behind so then they will try to like humiliate right. them into signing up Actually, I, I came would not have worked on me. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> it would have worked on me, I think. <laughs> so, because they were judging based on civilian clothing, right? There's actually a story where she, this one girl, part of the brigade, she boarded a bus and then she, there was a. She sat down next to this guy and then he. She gave him the feather. Then he whacked her, yeah. And mm. then it turns out, right, that he actually signed up to fight, but just that because he's going home. Like to mm. for a break or whatever, then he oh. wearing civilian uniform, mm. and then so then he stood and then he scold her like on the bus. Then that was when the movement started falling apart and like getting criticism and such. Good, right. she deserve it. <laughs> you pressure people, you go sign up lah. No, then how how else do you get? <laughs> is it not such Equality. a smart way to get people to sign up, knowing that men have bru- like they cannot yeah. bruise their ego and then they need to psychological manipulation. No, I I think it's, it's pretty away. shitty because they are not defending their 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 country. Yeah. Yeah, they are colonizing. You don't put arms in a person where they are not sure that they want to be there and then they are in the theater of war and then they're like shaking. Sure, hey, it shows one eh, when you hold a grenade at the time uh, you see your superiors around you. Uh, it f- shows one. They're very nice to you. Eh. I think one of the questions that we were asking is why should Singaporeans care? Mm. Yeah. Because they don't, right? Or is it a problem that mm. we don't care? Or like we know of people who don't care. Yeah. Is it wrong for them not to care? Yeah, yeah, she just, yeah, yeah. Oh shit, shit, hey, shit. Why are you saying me like that? Hey, <laughs> I was gonna say the same way. Yeah. <laughs> or people that care don't. I mean, I don't care enough to part with my money at this point, I feel. Really? Yeah. How much you want to donate to them? I don't How much? W- oh, really? Yeah. I, I, I also like. Yeah. Like it feels oh, like yeah, I have yeah, more yeah, personal yeah. needs at this point versus like For, confirm, confirm. Yeah, and that's fine lah. I think only you donate what you can or like if it's within your means. I'm all for raising awareness like I can do that if if that yeah. within my power. Mm. Yeah, donating maybe like if down the lines it really gets much worse, right? Yeah, yeah cause I also I'm very I always question like the avenues through which donations can be made, right? Because. I've seen large organizations end up with mm. all this fraud and all this f- shit, right? It's a lot so I don't know what to trust and where to trust and whether my money is actually going to help these people. But at this point, right, when it's so important that they, 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 they need this, right, I try to do a bit of research. Then after, I just I just give some first. Mm. Yeah. Versus Probably, like, because if it was the other way around, we are in the middle of this circumstance and nobody's going to f- help us. Mm. Like, wow, oh, sucks, yeah. So, so we've actually verified like several um, websites where you can, or several avenues for you to, to, to lend support if you want to. They, can, they come in the form of like petitions or donations. We're going to put them all in the link below so you can go and check it out. Yeah, mm. I think like as much as we talk about like media manipulation or sound like we might not be as sympathetic to the Ukrainians or like bringing up like how the West might be manipulating this whole narrative against Russia, right? Mm. We don't deny that like- People are dying. People yeah. are dying, they're innocent. Right? Yeah. And we are clearly against that. Lah. And I think the real purpose of having this discussion anyway is just to like kind of help us think outside the box a little bit and to also like be a little bit more critical when we see news like this, mm. lah, right? Because it's mm. it's not exactly what you read on the news. There's sometimes more to what meets the eye. Lah. And then it could happen to us. This yeah. really could be us. Yeah. And we wouldn't have lasted six days. Okay, more PSA alert. So uh, there was more to be announced, and uh, this will really please um, all you environment. You see how lovers. we spread this out, so it's bite-sized information that's important to our country that you will now learn. Thanks, okay, John. Go. So uh, there's gonna be plans that we put in place, right, to help Singapore achieve net zero emissions by 2050, which is honestly quite a big deal. Um, and so there's gonna be carbon taxes that will be raised progressively from 2024, and there's also gonna be support measures for businesses to help them transit because it's really not gonna be easy. Um, mm. And to help them invest in like energy efficient solutions. Um, the other thing that will also please Tesla fans such as myself is that the adoption of EVs is gonna be accelerated with more charging points uh, closer to home. So uh, you, you, you start seeing more charging points. 
lines. Like, I know it's something that a lot of people complain about. Uh, and also not forgetting, uh, so the construction industry will also uh, have $35 billion worth of green bonds available. It will be issued by 2030 to help fund public green infrastructure projects. For more information, there's also a link down below that I mentioned before. Uh, go check that out. There's really a lot of announcements. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.